it's amazing. I've never had a premiere in Paris before, so it's beautiful and and it's snowy outside and it's freezing cold and people are here and it's amazing. I'm, I, it's very exciting. Um, I love that she starts out in one place and ends up in the polar opposite while still maintaining her integrity and her vulnerability and her compassion, but she's, um, she's intelligent and she's powerful and she doesn't compromise that for anything. In the third film, yeah. she, yes, she's a lot more powerful. Um, I think that it is uh, enticing and I think it's liberating for people. Um, I think because because this sort of subject matter is written on a sort of commercial level, um, it's more accessible to people and, and a bit more uh, comprehensible. So I think that's kind of why it's a big success. And it's also kind of a fairy tale love story. I think they can expect more of a thriller. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's uh, it's the most epic version of the love story, and it's the end, and it's um, and it's just so, it's a special one. Thank you. Thank you. It's very exciting and very appropriate because, um, of course, the books are set in Paris. We have, and we also came and shot here during the summer. And we had a fantastic time, and of course, it's the city of love. So where else should we be for that last the last chapter in this? It's an extraordinary experience. I know it's a huge privilege to get your book adapted. It's an even bigger privilege to actually be involved in the making of it. And I've learned so much as a producer. It's been, um, it's been really educational. Um, and I think the fans are going to love this movie. They're, they're freed from their constraints of their relationship, if you like. They're, they're on equal footing now. Um, and in that sense, everyone always thinks that Christian is the stronger one, but he's never been the stronger one. He's always been the more fragile of the two. And we really get to see that. And, and Anna really steps up and, and takes charge. Um, so they're both freed from, from what they were used to, I suppose. Their chemistry is scorching. They look great. Um, they're very talented actors. Um, and they just do a fantastic job. They're great sports as well. I think they could expect some, some thrills, some darkness, and some sexy times. And also, people should stay until the end of the credits, or until the credits. Just, yes, yes that's a top tip. Okay? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you that's okay. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, in Paris, it's, it's poetic, because we finished the shoot here in Paris, and it was a lovely summer day. And now we're here and we've got the snow and it looks like we're inside a Parisian snow globe. It's beautiful. So it, it feels right. Jack is back. Jack is back in a bad way. Definitely. Very bad way. It's been amazing. It's been, it's been a, a two-year journey now for me and the, the fandom, the Fifty Shades family has been amazing. Uh, Erica herself has been amazing bringing me into this fold. and. Uh, there hasn't been a moment I haven't been pinching myself, I don't think. It's been, it's been pretty incredible. So I'm just, I'm just thankful to be here. Can't wait to see it on the big screen. And uh, yeah, just really grateful to be here. I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a classic fairy tale. It's a love story we've, uh, we've heard before, but set in a new way. And I think it was tintillating. It got people talking. And, uh, and it's a fun fantasy escape story. I think, I think this is really about, Fifty Shades Freed is about letting go of the past. And it's, you know, for them, uh, it's about trying to move on and finding a new way to communicate. And for Jack Hyde, he definitely can't let go of the past. So I think, to me, that's what it means. This, uh, Fifty Shades Freed is definitely a thriller. It's, uh, it's, it's the culmination of a lot of things that have been set up in, in stories uh, one and two. And this is everything Everything comes to a boil in this one, so it's, it's romantic, it's sad, but it's, uh, there's a thriller all along the way. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. I was just saying to the Universal people that it's so much better than L.A., it's so much more glamorous, and it seems like the best Hollywood experience is here in Paris. I expect to feel very satisfied uh, that I've been working for two years on both these movies and uh, I've been kind of immersed in the world of Fifty Shades and I've had a great time and I feel like we've finished it off in a really grand way that I feel for me is very satisfying and hopefully it will be for the audience. It's 
very, uh, very different than Darker in that uh, Darker was kind of the in-between thing where we started off with Anna being very sad that she was alone and uh, the working out of their dynamic, but this one starts with a wedding and a honeymoon and has a happy ending, so it's kind of, and it also has a sense of including the first two movies in the ending of this movie, so you have a real sense of completion. It's really satisfying. It's so weird because, uh, you know, it's strange for a director to come onto a movie where the actors are already cast and stuff, but I just felt like they were the two best people on the planet to play these parts. And um, it was great to come in and start Darker because they already had a relationship from Grey, and they even said they were much closer by the end of Grey than they were at the beginning. They didn't know each other. But um, so we had a great time where they got along so incredibly well and I like, laughed all the time. So it made my job a lot easier. Uh, yeah, uh, because I think, you know, the three movies were unusual because they weren't like sequels so much as they were a continuation of one story. So I always held in my head from the first scene in Grey, which I didn't drag, but I saw it. And uh, to the last of Darker, it's one big giant story, so there's a real sense of elation at the end of Free that I think is going to surprise people. I love that there's fans. It's standing out in the snow and everything is kind of encouraging. Oh, I love it. I love Paris. I did my first ever job here and I, I, uh, we actually filmed in the opera where, where we filmed some of uh, this movie as well. So. I, it's nice. It was nice to finish the movie here, and it's nice to be here, celebrating the final, the final premiere. I mean, he's come on a long way from when we, you know, first meet him. I think, uh, I think he grows up a lot during the, the three movies. I think, I think, love is meant to bring out the best in people, and relationships are meant to bring out the best in people, and I think that's what happens with him. And he's a much more rounded and uh, likable version by the by by Freed compared to Morgan first movie. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's fantastic and it's so romantic outside with all the snow. It's great, great timing. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited to see. It. No, 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 I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so I'm excited to see it. I, I can't wait to see what happens. Um, I just think it's been amazing. I was speaking to Erica last night. I got I was lucky enough to to, to meet her and. Uh, I just think it's fantastic that she wrote these books out of nowhere and they've turned into such like a massive part of time for us, of our generation. Um, and she was like, I didn't mean to write it. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. She was just writing them for fun and then obviously it turned out to be this whole trilogy of things that's turned into movies and everything else. So it's been fantastic. Well, I, I, I think purely that. I think the fact that she was writing these books purely for her own enjoyment, she put her heart and soul into it because it's what she enjoyed. And then, you know, you find out that loads of people enjoy it as well. So I think that's what makes it special. I often think the easiest things that you create are the things you create in like 10 minutes. You know, you think of this idea and then suddenly it just happens. And I think that's kind of what happened with her, really, although it would have took a long time to write those books. If she wrote those books in 10 minutes, she'd be, she'd be doing something else. <laughs> um, I think they're fantastic. I mean, when I think of the Fifty Shades franchise, they're the first people I think of. Uh, and I was lucky enough to meet them both yesterday. I uh, had a little bit of a chat with Jamie, and he's a super cool guy, so it's nice, nice to, to meet the, the people behind the characters. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I think it's a great ending to an amazing ride. I think it's perfect since the movie filmed filming here, um, finished here, and I don't know, I'm kind of sad that it's over, but I'm very excited to get in there and watch the final. Yes, this time Mia is going through a lot, um, but you know what? It's fine because it kind of brings the family together. So it's like dark, but also really exciting. As you know, I love the, the growth. I loved how it's really shaped into not only a love, sex, fashion, almost passionate movie, but it's also got an undertone of family and balance, which I think is really cool. It's amazing. Deco is so good and so chilled and professional, and Jamie's also really, really amazing at what he does. Um, and he's so gorgeous to look at. It's pretty difficult to not look at the screen and I love his family and his wife and it's just a really good combination. I think this film is all about of course sex, love, passion but again it, they fight for their family and what they love and you see it and you kind of really see a real family form so yeah. Yeah it's for you it's with me and Liam Payne who is just somewhere over there 
and it's a love song finishing off the movie and it's uh, really good, it's the lead single of the soundtrack and yeah, I'm very proud of it. Thank you, thank you.